Hi there everybody and welcome to another video here at Daring Beefcake. Um, on today's video I have this uh, VW Polo. Uh, this is a 1.4, a 2012. Now um, this Polo is leaking a little bit of coolant. Um, so I've had a look uh, as to where this coolant might be leaking from and uh, it's definitely not the radiator or any of this area or the water pump this leak is coming from somewhere just uh, a part which sits just under the intake manifold so um, it's like a coolant flange or something that's the name of it um so what i'm gonna do is i'm, I'm gonna actually uh, i haven't got the part yet so what i want to do is remove uh, we need to remove the manifold to get to that part basically and then once i remove the manifold we can have a look at the actual part and hopefully a part number might be written on it or at least by looking at it we can actually see uh order the correct part because uh, um, i've been trying to order the part but there's just been some confusion uh of of the model of it so some models have that flange and some other models have a slightly different one so to make sure i i'm going to remove it which anyway it needs to be replaced um so i'm going to start by taking this this is the air filter here housing so we're going to take that air filter housing out and that air filter is just plugged in it's got three mounts rubber mounts and um, here this air intake it's just plugged in here as well into here and here so all you have to do is get a screwdriver lift this little sort of uh, plastic bits up a bit and then this end on the side and you'll be able to remove that and then this hose also you want to take it out it's going to be connected there you just want to take it out from there and you have another hose um, this hose at the back here is just mounted on the side so you want to push it out and once you've done that you want to pull this cover out of its mounts obviously i already done that um but it's just mounted on those three points there one two three so and obviously it, that part goes into the uh, the throttle body and once that is out we have our manifold here throttle body injections um so at, the, at this minute I'm not sure how far we have to dismantle. I haven't done one of these before, but uh, we could. Uh, I might just take the injection out and then uh, tackle the manifold. So I'm gonna have a quick look and, and then we'll get back to it. Okay, so I've been studying this a little bit. Um, still don't know exactly what's the best way of doing it, but uh, <clears throat> I was thinking of removing the fuel rail here, but uh, at the moment, I'm trying not to, because uh, we might be able to pull the manifold back a little bit and access the piece. So um, there is a breather hose sitting um, at the bottom of, well, coming out of that part, there is a breather hose and it connects to just down here. So let me show you that. So you want to disconnect this breather hose here. And um, to do that, you need to press. So let me try to show you from this hole. So you need to press on this, on the sides here. and pull this back however it's not as easy as that obviously i've already done it um, what i actually did is i got a i got one of these and pushed it on the side so first i did one side like in there and i opened it because ultimately when you press up here and at the bottom technically you're opening the sides here, these little sides. And when those sides open, 
the little clip gets released and this comes out. So you need to do that on this side and when, when you do one side you will see it come out a little bit and then you can get onto the other side. So from there, something like that and open it and push it back and that will release that hose. So that hose may be, may be brittle, uh, it does become brittle and sometimes it breaks. If you can maybe save it from breaking then that's okay but otherwise you could change it as well because it can be, uh, it's just one of those hoses, it's a breather pipe and it, it gets, it dries out in time and then it snaps easily. So, um, and that hose connects to the part that we want to change. But once you've disconnected that, um, the next thing really is to, which I've already done as well, it's open the, the bolts that hold the manifold in place. Now, I used one of these. Um, now, I think this one particular one, well, it fits quite well on the bolt. This, these bolts are not tight. There is, a, there is one there, two, three, four, not this one, the one in there, four, and five, this one here. And number six is just hiding in, in there. So it's in this in this hole here. So now this tool, it's okay for this one and this one, uh, but for the rest, it's not really uh, accessible. So I've got the longer version of it, um, which, for example, this one here you can access if you just uh, remove this clip here. You can pull this pipe, this uh, sort of cable connection out like so and you can then access your your bolt a little bit easier from here like that to take it out you'll be able to get your ratchet here and loosen <coughs> loosen the bolt so that's no problem you can also of course use this tool for this one as well and for this one and, and so on, but this one also will go into this hole and it will allow you to remove the one, the bolt that's in there and and then you will also have to use this particular one to get to this bolt here as you can see Otherwise, um, with this other one, with the short one, you can't actually get to it. There's too much interference all around. And however, this one here, um, if you pull this uh, connection out from there, it's just plugged in, it's just uh, sort of holding in there, mounted on the, on the side of that. If you pull it out, you will have to use this to get to that bolt. And you may find that your ratchet doesn't actually fit there because of the, again, you have the, the fuel rail here, which is one of the reasons that maybe you would want to remove it if, or not. But also you could remove the throttle body and then you put an extension there and you can remove that bolt, no issues. Uh, but what I used, it's, um, I used uh, one of those and it just fitted in there and I was able to open it. Um, otherwise, what happens is that if you try to use a, an extension, it doesn't fit because of the throttle body. So you would need a very small extension, which is practically that. That isn't an extension, but it's kind of, it's a, it converts a half inch drive into a quarter drive, something like that. And it makes it a tiny little bit longer and that fits perfectly in there. 
but uh, I'm just here giving you ideas basically of what I've done to get to these bolts so that way you can move or undo all of those six and then you might see that this manifold is already loose so now we, I'm just gonna go ahead and remove all the all the bolts and uh, we'll see how far this goes back or not. We have our breather hose disconnected, so that shouldn't be an issue. So that's the part that we're after. Huh? 
Yeah, but uh, So, the T20 Torx, remove a little Torx screw. And hopefully, Okay, so there was two Torx screws holding this in place. Um, the other thing to be careful here is uh, the, uh, the O-rings for the manifold may stay in place there, like that. So just take them out because you're gonna wanna put them back into the, into the manifold before fitting that back. But this here is the part that you're after. And we need to disconnect this coolant pipe here and the one on the, the other side. So quite easily done. Just press the clamps like this one. Press the little clamps and remove the hose.
well there we are you can see how this was leaking there I guess they I guess they crack in time not really sure and so and you have a hose here as well um, now I'll try to see if there's any part numbers here there is a part number there zero three zero three six one two one one eight 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 so you're supposed to press on the sides and this comes out but it's hard to press on the sides so if you put a screwdriver like or something there open it and push it back and then do the same on this side comes out so luckily this didn't break it doesn't seem to be too brittle at the moment so we can reuse it so while I wait for the part to come I just gave this area clean um, I also use a little bit of emery paper or a little bit of uh, sanding paper to sand whatever roughness might be around here because uh, obviously you don't want to put your manifold back and then find that there's an air leak so just give it a nice clean and and uh, on this side as well just give it a clean this side is just plastic but clean it so i've got all my o-rings here i've also cleaned those so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to put a little bit of multi peppers grease on this so that's the literally multi-purpose grease so I'll just soak them a bit like so and then put them in their corresponding slot but before I put them back um, I'd rather put the, uh, the part back and then put this on and the manifold is ready to go back on otherwise while we try to fit that back in um, if you already have these in there nicely greased, we might mess them up again. So just prepare them and it's all ready. Okay, got the new part. Just arrived. Uh, got it from VW. It's about 25 pounds. That there. Yeah, so I, if you have to get a new one of these, you might as well get it together with that. But luckily, because um, we managed to remove this one before, it didn't snap. Plus, it doesn't seem to be as bad yet. But they do get a bit brittle and they snap. So, maybe about 15 pounds for this. Maybe worth changing it anyway. But it's not too bad. This one is not too bad. So now we're going to start the refitting process. And um, it's quite a simple thing, really. It's, it's, there's no real mathematics to this. Just connects two pipes on the sides and the breather hose which we can connect and in at the end to be honest because we have actually there is room to get your hand there and just put the two torx screws that hold that in place now i'm going to put a little bit of uh, multi-purpose grease around this o-ring as well so i can push that in there without damaging the o-ring and apart from that you just have to get everything back um, in place which was fairly simple to remove really um, so we're gonna get on with it I might not really uh, say much so I'll just put the, the camera to, sh to, to record but uh, I'll just get on with it
Okay, I think we're pretty much done. I don't think I've uh, forgotten anything because there wasn't much to forget. So the last thing would be just pushing the hose. So this hose, and uh, I'm just gonna put a little bit of, uh, again, multi-purpose grease around the O-ring there and here. Let me just show you. There's the hose there. Goes in there like this. Just try to get some lights down here. I think I might need my two hands, but you can see the other end is just there. So I've already fixed my airbox here, but uh, uh, on the host, on the hose, um, uh, the air, the breather hose there, it's, it's better to put the top one, the top first, and then do the bottom. So you can maneuver the bottom a bit easier. So plug in the top of the hose and then do the bottom one. And then, <laughs> That's pretty much it. You just have to now put your uh, air filter back on. Just push it, make sure it's, it's plugged in those mounts properly and clip that back on. Don't forget your hose here and don't forget the hose that mounts there at the back. And uh, what's left to do now is get the car started and let it run for a while. Right now I'm going to start to make sure it's running properly, that there's not any issues with any of what we removed as in the manifold and whatnot just make sure it's running properly but you want to double check that after once you know it's running properly then you want to double check that there's no any further uh, coolant leaks and also because we lost a little bit of coolant um, once you get the car running and it's hot the coolant may run down a little bit so you may need to top up a little bit um, and on that note I'm just gonna get the car running we are pretty much okay engine sounds nice and sweet um, so I'm just gonna let it run until it gets hot and, uh, and check for, for leaks so um, apart from that I think we're pretty much done here so I hope the video helps don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll see you all in the next video so thank you for watching